As I walk these streets, I feel the echoes of a time gone by, the vibrations of a town steeped in prosperity, bustling with activity, and fed by the veins of the mighty hunter. Until the 1880s, Maitland was the main centre north of Sydney. It grew into a very affluent town, the main port for people to send trade, commerce up north. That's why the city grows along this river. Part of what's really special about Maitland is this very intact representation of early Australian architecture along its high street. Maitland is a place where you look up because if you look up, you see the history and the nature and the affluence of the city built into the fabric of it. It was the river that brought life to our city. It was the river that connected us to the world. We depended upon it and we thrived because of it. It brought wealth, it brought stature, and it brought destruction that led us to fear it. We turned our backs on it. I think there are a variety of factors for the decline of Maitland. People are shifting to Newcastle and to Sydney. And then there's always the ongoing issue with the Hunter River. It provides water, it does a whole variety of things, but it also floods. And so that made it really difficult for Maitland to be as attractive as it was. Back in 2009, Council commissioned a study into the CBD. Two of the big things there were improving the public domain, but also improving our relationship with the river. I was really amazed that you would stand in the high street and have no awareness that 30 metres away was the Hunter River. It was a beautiful riverbank, but it wasn't a terribly engaging on the built side. Our role on the project, we had a supporting role to McGregor Coxall, who were the designers for the levy. We really wanted to create this more civic scale connection between High Street and the river. And ultimately, where we landed was for the project to be both a public space, a threshold, and a portal through to the river environment. This has delivered the river to the CBD in a way that none of us thought possible. We've conceived the building to give this really tight framing, almost like a picture frame, and we crafted the building to have a very um, minimal expression to really keep the focus upon the view through of the landscape beyond. The angles of the building pick up on the geometries of the streets. So we have Bolwood Street, we have the High Street, and then we have the river itself that moves. We've bundled all of these different geometries together till we've found a pleasing sculptural composition. And so there's this sense of a painting, but there's also a sense of an opening that says walk through, come backwards and forwards. I was watching a couple who had lived in Maitland for 70 years and they walked through the river link and were kind of stunned by the presence of the river and they just rested there and gazed upon the river as if they'd never seen it before. To us as designers, that speaks to the transformative potential of architecture and how it can affect the way people experience and see a place. Whenever I come down to Maitland CBD now, there is more activity. I think it's great that we've got spaces now outside and lovely spaces like public art. It's a really exciting era, being able to link this space with our businesses and our city. That space activation will really support and enhance all the business opportunities in this CBD. Maitland no longer turns its back on the river, it's embracing the river. I certainly believe that those connections, whether it's buildings or it's the river or it's through festivals or it's through talks or it's just through walking and talking and being, is a really vital part of making people feel a part of a place. And for me that's great because I think it's a great city. We always saw the river as a burden, not as the lifeblood of the city. This Riverlink building has made the river such a positive thing for Maitland.
There's so much that we've done with this space and there's so much more that we can do.